Today we are going to discuss about ICDS 8 on securities. Yes, ICDS 8 on securities. So what this actually standard mean and why this standard has come into picture? First of all, let us understand what is a security. Security has been defined under section 2 clause H of the Securities Contract Regulations Act 1956. <coughs> security has been defined as a security under section 2H of the Securities Contract Regulations Act 1956. Basically, it is shares, debentures, government bonds. These are all securities actually. Right? Now, it also includes shares of companies in which public are not substantially interested. Suppose example, a company, private company is there. So, private company is a company in which public is not substantially interested. Or we can say, public company is set up. But, the major shareholding is by very few people. Like 3 people hold 99% shares. Only 1-2% shares are given to balance 3-4 people. So, in that case, we can say public is not substantially interested. So, in such a case also, the company's shares will be considered as security. Basically, public will be considered to be substantially interested if at least 25% shares are held by the public, general public at large. But if it is not the case, then it is a company in which public is not substantially interested. So, shares of such companies in which public is not substantially interested is also covered as security. And last thing to say that derivatives, right, derivatives everybody know, is not considered as security. So, what is security as per section 2, clause H of the Securities Contract Regulations Act, we will discuss in detail in the law subject, but presently remember that it is simply shares, debentures, bonds. Even shares of companies in which public is not substantially interested are covered, but derivatives are not considered as a security. Clear? Okay. Now we know what is security. Now security can be held as stock in trade or can be held as a capital asset. Suppose example I purchase the shares of Reliance. I want to keep it for long term purpose. Then I held it as capital asset. Then it will be covered under capital gains chapter. And you all know that ICDS is not applicable to capital gains. Right? So, that's why we, it, this is not covered under ICDS 8. But suppose if it is held by, held as stock in trade, then ICDS 8 will be applicable. So, if security is held by as stock in trade, then ICDS 8 applicable. Suppose you think about Kotak securities, HDFC securities, angel broking firms, right, which are venture, uh, these are the firms in they continuously buy, sell securities, correct? Or suppose I am a person who is regularly de dealing in intra day. So, for me, it is continuously buying, selling. My business is buying and selling securities. In that case, this ICDS is applicable. But please remember, you are, suppose if it is share, you get dividend income, correct? you get profit, the company gets profit, a part of the profit is distributed as dividend. If it is a bond, then interest income. But this dividend income, interest income is measured under ICDS on revenue recognition. So, this ICDS will not cover interest and dividend income measurement or recognition. If suppose you are a person Involved in insurance business. Suppose you are Life Insurance Corporation. Your company is uh, Tata Insurance. Your company is HDFC Insurance. In that case, for that such companies which are engaged in insurance business, 
this icd is not applicable suppose the companies are engaged in mutual fund like mutual fund companies banking companies venture capital companies or any financial institution set up by the central or state government law that is act or recognized as financial institution under the companies act 1956 or uh, companies act 2013 like industrial development bank of india industrial credit and investment corporation of india icici idbi these are recognized as financial institutions by the companies act if this is the case to this financial institutions also this icds does not apply chalo we are discussing icds on securities securities means bonds shares debentures correct very good now it can be held as capital asset and this icds don't cover it if the securities are held as stock in trade this icds covers it then if the icds if this securities are held by insurance company mutual fund company venture capital company commercial bank financial institution then icds will not cover right so if it is held as stock in trade by any other right apart from this five what i said venture capital company mutual fund company financial institutions banks insurance companies so other than this five anybody holds it as stock in trade then this icds it will be applicable will be applicable clear very good if we have to do income measurement recognition of interest and dividend this icds don't talk about it okay okay now basically why this icds is suppose example you sell the securities so sale consideration is quite common because we know the sale consideration minus cost will be treated as income right because if, when it is stock in trade we sell and minus cost will be treated as income to determine the income sale consideration is quite common very easy but what about cost how to measure the cost that's what explained in this icds so initial recognition the icds says that uh, securities should be measured at cost now what is cost cost is the purchase price if you pay any brokerage also during the purchases that brokerage should be added if you are paying any taxes like example when we buy on stock exchange we pay something called as securities transaction tax so basically remember three things purchase price brokerage and taxes these three should be added to the cost and initially the security should be recognized on the basis of actual cost but sometimes what happens i am selling the shares in return i am getting the shares it happens in case of amalgamation what happen whatever is amalgamating company yani the company which is going to close down now that company shares we give to the new company and new company gives the shares to us so in this case what should be the cost of the shares it is the fair market value of the shares which you received it is the fair market value of the shares which you received this is what you should remember now what is fair market value suppose example i'll tell you that tata company purchased chorus company suppose completely amalgamated now chorus name do not exist for example it did not happen okay tata acquired but chorus name is still there so if example chorus company is acquired by tata now all the shares of chorus will be given to tata and tata will issue the shares to the shareholders of chorus 
if this happens right some shareholders would be there right suppose i'll take you tell you one more example real time practical latest example like example patanjali purchased ruchi soya now when patanjali purchased ruchi ruchi soya now the shareholders of ruchi soya will get the shares of patanjali if this type of exchange happens so we gave shares and we got the shares the shares what we got the fair market value of it will be treated as the cost for us suppose i had some ruchi soya shares with me but now that are cancelled and i got patanjali shares so what is the fair market value of patanjali shares that will be considered okay yeah let me continue with the story what is fair market value then fair market value is simply the price which the knowledgeable willing buyer and seller negotiate so if there is a knowledgeable willing buyer knowledgeable willing seller now seller will not be ready to sell at less buyer will not be ready to buy at more so they come to some reasonable price and that is fair market value suppose example i am selling the shares to somebody in between suppose i have patanjali shares with me but problem is uh, i cannot hold it i require some money so i sold these shares to suppose harsh now i purchased the shares for 10000 rupees and uh, this september dividend is to come now generally they say that 8% is the common dividend they are going to give now i will not only get 10000 but i will also get the dividend proportionate to the period held by me dividend proportionate to the period held by me suppose example i held it for 8 months january february march april may june july august september 9 months right yeah so 9 months whatever dividend comes like 10000 is the value of shares into 6% so 600 will come 600 into 9 by 12 so 450 so i will receive 10450 from harsh now this price which i paid to harsh is called as cum dividend price what we call it as cum dividend price okay so in this case when later on the subsequent measurements are to be done or to determine the cost they will not consider this 450 but they will consider this 10000 only right the dividend should be distributed between two parts one is the pre acquisition dividend and the post acquisition dividend pre acquisition dividend should be deducted from the price paid to arrive at the actual price with the example i made you understand now we understood that okay how to measure this what about valuing at the end of each year suppose if the shares are listed shares then it should be valued at cost or net realizable value whichever is lower are here shares are also securities are also stock in trade right so that's why cost or net realizable value whichever is lower should be the value but suppose example if the shares are not listed in the stock exchange or suppose the shares are listed but they are not regularly traded then we can say that they are something like unquoted shares suppose if it is regularly quoted buying selling happens on stock market then the price will be shown on the index on the stock market screens on the website it would be continuously depicted but because they are not traded the price is not shown so if the shares are unquoted shares 
or if the shares are not listed at all then subsequently also it should be measured at cost only but if it is listed and quoted shares cost or net realizable value whichever is lower if it is unlisted shares or listed but not quoted then only at cost it should be recognized now whenever we discussed that listed shares we remember that it should be valued at cost or net realizable value whichever is lower clear yes sir but how to determine this in accounting standard what we do i'll tell you suppose i have reliance share reliance share market net realizable value is suppose 1200 my cost is 1000 then 1000 or 1200 whichever is lower i have tata shares it is suppose 700 rupees market price or net realizable value and cost is suppose 800 then 800 and uh, whatever market net realizable value whichever is lower we will value if it is suppose sun pharma then market price is suppose 1500 rupees and uh, cost is suppose 1100 rupees whichever is lower 1100 yani for each company share separately it is valued in accounting standards but in icds it is not the case icds says we will do valuation on category basis that means this sun pharma tata reliance all the shares whatever cost is there i'll add the costs whatever net realizable value is there i will add net realizable value of all the three then whatever total comes na total cost of all three total net realizable value of all the three we will compare and whichever is lower we will consider with this i feel you understood how actually this securities under icds eight are method on a fast track note remember if it is capital asset security don't cover it here if it is stock in trade then only cover second thing interest and dividend income measured under like when revenue recognition if it is insurance company mutual fund company bank venture capital companies or financial institutions then for them this icds does not apply initially purchase price the cost of security will be the purchase price plus purchase price plus bolo kya hai plus brokerage charges plus taxes will be the cost if you give the shares and get the shares then whatever you got the shares their fair market value you should check fair market value is that value uh, which is exchanged between knowledgeable willing buyer and seller if it is come dividend or come interest price then remove that interest dividend portion to find the actual cost subsequently if the shares are listed shares then value it at actual cost or net realizable value whichever is lower on the 31st march that is last day of the previous year but this cost or nrv should be done category wise that means whatever shares i am holding all the shares cost should be totaled and whatever shares i am holding all the nrvs i should total then i will compare the lower of the totals that i will consider at cost subsequently if it is unlisted shares or unquoted shares then i will take actual cost only initial cost only even on the 31st march on the reporting date also so this is it i revised everything explained everything i feel you should not have any doubt with this any doubts keep in touch i'll be very happy to help you all bye everybody